Hi, hello, hi. It's your friend, Nathan Sa. Today we're talking about dysphoria. What does dysphoria mean? Well, according to the internet, dysphoria is a profound state of unease or dissatisfaction. In a psychiatric context, dysphoria may accompany depression, anxiety or agitation. It can also refer to a state of not being comfortable in one's current body, particular in cases of gender dysphoria. When we talk about dysphoria um, in a trans community, we talk about a disalignment between the gender that you were assigned with at birth and the gender you would like to present as, or, or the gender that you know that you are. Gender dysphoria can come in a lot of like different ways. Um, many people experience body dysphoria, but a lot of people also experience social dysphoria when their trans selves, you know, collide with a transphobic or homophobic society, which doesn't accept them or it doesn't value their identity, their pronouns, etc. Ways to alleviate that dysphoria and that intense discomfort within oneself is, for example, to pursue a social transition. So starting to tell people in your surroundings that you would like to change your pronouns, you would like to change your name or have them refer to you as a different thing than before. So say you're a girl, they say you're a boy, or maybe you're the supreme overlord, Satan's child of Lucifer. You never know. What's important to to realize is that it's, it's good to address these things because a lot of people don't know about, you know, what is inside of you, so I get read as female a lot, even if that is not my lived reality, so I have to correct people, even if I don't want to, even if it causes me a lot of distress, I have to correct the people because their assumptions about me are wrong. Social transition is a lot about trying to get your surroundings in sync with who you know you are. Also have like medical transition, which is something a lot of trans people pursue, but not everybody, because the thing is, dysphoria is not experienced by every trans person. You don't need to have dysphoria to be trans, you're absolutely valid if you don't. And if you do, not everybody has the means or the structural possibilities to pursue a medical transition. So a lot of times people can't access the medical services they would need to transition. Uh, a lot of times also people do not want to medically transition and that's also completely fine, you know? It's every person's right to do with their body what they want. So basically, every trans person is different, no trans person is the same, and whether somebody wants to medically transition or not does not determine whether they are trans or not. Basically, there are different things that you can do to medically transition. One of them is HRT, which stands for Hormone Replacement Therapy. So you supply your body with a different hormone than the one that it currently uses to achieve more masculine, more feminine, or more androgynous and neutral results to your body, to your voice. Then you also have uh, possibilities of surgeries. And something that is really important to remember with trans people is that our surgeries are not cosmetic surgeries. Our surgeries are reconstructive surgeries in the way that if you were forced to go through a puberty that you did not want to and you did not choose, which caused you a lot of trauma because your body was altering itself into shapes that you did not wish. So for example, a transmasculine, a gender or genderqueer person who pursues double mastectomy, so the removal of like breast tissue, um, might do so because they did not want that at all to happen before. So it is really reconstructive and not just for, you know, aesthetic purposes at all. It is a um, life-altering, life-changing and oftentimes really life-saving procedure for a lot of trans people. A common misconception is that uh, there is one operation to have when you're a trans person. So like, you enter the room, the hospital, and you come out a completely different person with makeup and shit and everything, high heels, you know, all the fancy stuff. That is not the truth, that's not the lived reality of most people. So there is actually a number of surgeries that people can choose to get. Um, for example, you have facial feminization surgery, you have top surgery and bottom surgery, as we call it in a simplified way. You also have different other surgeries that people can get to 
affirm their gender identity. There are a lot of resources about the specifics online. Uh, I would like to point you to different YouTube channels by trans people at the end, so you can check all of them out and get really great resources, really great information. My personal relation to dysphoria is that I experience a lot of like, like chest dysphoria and a lot of social dysphoria. So what that means for me personally, I did never want to go through female puberty and um, have any chest growth whatsoever. So if I could, if I had the possibility to, I would choose to have a double mastectomy. But unfortunately for me, that is still very hard to achieve, especially since I'm moving a lot. And you know, when you're not at a place for a longer time, getting the resources you need and um, um, medical help you need uh, isn't really easy. So that for me is an issue. So social dysphoria is something I experience a lot. It means that people generally misgender me, so that means they call me by the wrong pronouns. Uh, I get read as female most of the time, so people use she and her pronouns, but those are not my pronouns. Um, my pronouns are he, him, or they, them. And uh, when somebody calls me she, her, a girl, a woman, a princess, you know, what, whatever, it causes me a lot of distress. I have to experience that every day because of course not everybody knows my gender because um, I do not pass, so basically I do not get read as the gender that I know I am and uh, that causes a lot of like disconnect which for me is very hard to experience. A lot of trans people experience social dysphoria. I mean, if you watch any type of mainstream media, you will know that, you know, we are most commonly the bad guys or the weird guys or the freak show people on television. So yeah, let's come to the fun part where I tell you about cool YouTubers. A. Uh, one of my favorite people is Chase Ross. He has one of the most amazing and extensive collections of videos where he talks about himself, being trans men and uh, trans masculine stuff, mental health issues, which I think is also extremely important. Um, and he's just a generally awesome person, so you should totally check him out. Uh, also with his best friend Aaron and Sweeney, who is so cool. They have the You're So Brave podcast, where they talk a lot about like trans issues as well. Sometimes they do fun stuff and it's really cute, and I love it. So. Go check them out. You also have the wonderful, amazing, and fantastic Cat Black, who is just such a cool person and who knows so much and is incredibly intelligent. And just go check her out. I love her so much. Also have Steph Sanyadi, who is like fantastic, extremely intelligent, wonderful, wonderful person. You of course also have Ash Hardell, who is such a ray of sunshine. Like. I love their videos so much, just watching them makes me happy and it will make you happy too, so go check them out for sure. Yeah, so that's it for today folks, give it a think, check out those amazing people, honestly you love them so much just like I did, and uh, yeah, be nice to a trans person today, hey, we love you, bye bye!